and welcome back from lunch. Uh, by this time of the day, we have had the time to get to know each other a little bit. And I figure since we are like in family here, I will start by asking an honest question. So, how many of you are truly proud of your APIs and the experience they deliver today? <coughs> oh, we have a few great ones. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, but the reason why I'm asking this is because research tells us that usability is in fact the main reason why developers will choose one API over another. And I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes we keep spending more time, you know, thinking about the next cool API, about the next product that will help us gain competitive advantage, and we forget about making sure our current APIs do deliver the best experience. The truth is, and that's probably one of the reasons why we are all here today, getting developer experience right can be really hard. And so um, today we'll be talking about something that can help you to get there, and that is user feedback. My name is Maria Garcia. I am the strategy for Amadeus for Developers, and you heard a little bit about that uh, this morning. And today we'll be sharing some of the key lessons learned of our transformational journey over the last year to open some of our APIs, uh, launch a completely new developer platform, and also try to deliver a better developer experience along the way. But uh, perhaps the first question you're asking is why should I even care about user experience or design? Uh, you have no idea how many times we got this question asked when we were starting this program. Because people would challenge why we care about it if this was just a product for developers. So uh, back then I was like, what do you mean? I mean, developers are also humans, right? And so people don't want to waste their time just trying to figure out what you meant in your documentation or uh, debugging code because your endpoints were just too hard to understand. And so if you manage to deliver that very simple API that will help us to achieve their objective and very quickly move to the next thing, they will just love you for that. And to get there, that is no surprise, user feedback is actually instrumental. <coughs> Based on our experience over the last year, there are many reasons why you should care about feedback. And the first one is that it helps you find the blind spots. So I don't know how many developers we have in the room. Can you raise your hands? A bunch of you. Uh, so let's face it, the longer you stare at your own code, the more likely it is that you start to think like, well, you know, it's okay, it's not so hard to understand. But it is really when you get out of the building and when you see how other people look at your stuff, that you realize where the bugs or the errors to improvement are. The second thing is, it helps you build your product roadmap. So if you're currently managing APIs at your organization, we likely share the same challenge, which is a wish list of improvements that sometimes may seem like never ending, right? Uh, so think about how today uh, you prioritize those things, and sometimes even more importantly, how do you convince other stakeholders who may have different priorities? Well, by talking to customers, you're able to build a list of priorities that is based on real evidence, and that will help you build a much stronger case. <coughs> the third point is, it helps you validate your business model. So I don't know if you have found this struggle yourselves, but I always think that uh, defining the pricing for APIs can be really hard. And one other thing is because there seems to be a lack of transparency in the industry. And so how do you really know how much your consumers are willing to pay for your API? Or uh, should you just have a standard business model or offer more flexible pricing options? Well, we um, discovered that by really talking to customers and understanding the business that they were building on top of our APIs, we were in a much better position to first understand how we were able to support them, but then, second, and even more important, to discover new monetization opportunities with them. And the fourth, and uh, to me this is even the most important one, it helps you build a sense of community. Um, I often see people uh, reluctant to ask for feedback, as if that was like, you know, implying that the product is not perfect. But the thing is, when you really ask your customers what they think, and you act on that feedback, that is when you show that you truly, truly care, 
And even more importantly, you can start to identify your first community champions, which eventually will be critical for your program success. Mm -hmm. So now we know um, why we should all care about feedback, even if it is a part of our developers indeed. But uh, let's look into the, uh, the different ways in which you can collect the feedback through all the different phases of your API program. And the first is a step, uh, no matter if you're starting from scratch or you're just kind of redefining your strategy, will always be to talk uh, to either current or potential customers. This may sound obvious, but user interviews is a very, very powerful way to really discover what are the true needs and the true frustrations of your customers. So when we started this program um, a couple of years ago, we spent some time uh, having one-on-one -on -one interviews with both customers of other Amadeus APIs, but also individuals who have never been exposed to APIs before and whose profile match with all the new customer segments that we were targeting. What's interesting about it is that thanks to that, we were able to discover common needs and pain points across all different segments, and that helped us get the guidance that we needed to move to the next phase of design. So um, let's say that you have already talked to your customers, you have validated your idea, and now prototyping is what can help you move from concept to reality and make sure that you define uh, the right uh, foundations for your API even before you build your backend. And this is very critical because if you are able to identify the areas for improvement early in the process, then you will be able to save a lot of time and a lot of money. And there are many ways in which you can achieve this. Uh, for example, you can think about using Postman or Stoplight, which allows you to create an observer that will return the design example as a response. Just keep in mind a couple of things though. So you will need to provide clear documentation as well as some robust mock data because you will want uh, your testers to get a real feeling of how the API will behave in a real development environment. So you have that amazing prototype that is already working. Now you invest in a very good shape to start performing your first usability test. Um, if uh, we have done a lot of these uh, tests, both for the APIs and the platform itself. And my advice would be, if you can only pick one way to collect feedback from your customers, this is probably your best uh, option. Because with usability tests, you can see how users behave, how they interact with your product, and also, more important, what are the kind of frictions that they encounter. So performing this test is very easy. You will just have to give developers a series of programming tasks that they can complete by using the um, API that you want to test. And you will ask them to think aloud as they are completing the tasks in real time. So that way you can see um, how they behave, how they interact with the product, and also listen uh, to their thoughts. We uh, learned a lot by performing this test, and so I just wanted to uh, quickly share a couple of examples. And our first lesson learned was, no matter how great your documentation is, if people can actually not find it. So when we started at the beginning, we had some full cool code examples that we thought would be really useful, but they were presenting this, how can we put it, not so good looking uh, examples repository that, by the way, was hidden many clicks away from the homepage. So what we realized by doing this test that was, was that uh, no user was actually able to find these examples. And they were asking questions to us like, well, why are you not providing code samples? I will be extremely uh, helpful. So um, after many iterations, we really improved the way that we display it today. And what we see is that today we have a high volume of traffic coming to these uh, pages. Another example uh, is into what we were hearing this morning about the importance of making the first API call fast and easy. So when we were performing this test, we saw that um, our users were very interested in being able to quickly understand what the API did before even writing a single line of code. So thanks to that, uh, we came up with the idea of having the shooter uh, in the documentation directly so people can, in a matter of seconds, just to understand what they can achieve with it. There are many more things that you can do at this stage of the journey. Uh, one of them, for example, is using index cards, which can help you with taxonomies. 
The concept really is, is very simple. You just have to write some words uh, in different parts, pass them to developers, and ask them to either explain what the concept means to them, or to organize the cards following the order that makes more sense to them. And you can use this for many different things, like naming your endpoints or um, classifying them into different categories. In fact, I would like to propose that we do a very quick experiment all together, if that's okay. Um, so I would like you to take like five, ten seconds, no more, to think what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you see the words that I'm about to display on the screen and share your thoughts with the person that is sitting right next to you. Okay? Ready? So uh, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you see the words open API? <laughs> And you will be hearing more about it later this afternoon. You can also think about working with external consultants or agencies that are specialized in developer experience. And in fact, we have done the three things, and they have all proven to be very useful for us. So um, we are now kind of halfway through this journey that we are going through together. And so far, we've been able to validate our idea without writing a single line of code. Uh, we've been able to build a prototype, uh, we've iterated on our documentation, and so it seems we're getting ready to keep production finally, right? Yeah. Uh, but so far, everything I've been telling you were kind of about unicorns and rainbows, and so I would like to take a moment to share uh, something about a time we totally failed in our approach uh, to collect users' feedback. So beta testing is, in my opinion, one of the best ways that you can make sure your APIs are fully ready before you expose them to the entire outside world. Um, if you think about it, for the first time, developers will be building real applications with your APIs, and so they will go in a much more depth, uh, level of detail, and they will be able to identify problems with authentication, performance, inconsistencies, things that you were not able to identify with the prototype. There are many different ways in which you can do this. Um, so you can uh, keep working with the same testers that you were working with for the previous phases. You can reach out to customers who have said that they were interested in this product. Or uh, you can even create like an open sign-up form just to search for volunteers. In our case, uh, we, when we were about to launch the program, we were, we were all caught up in this exciting idea of building what we call a beta testers community. So, in our mind, we will have this permanent pool of developers who will always get early access to any new release, uh, that on top of many other benefits, right? So, uh, again, we were super excited about it. Uh, we started the communication campaign, we got the first surprise, <coughs> just to find out that, in fact, we did not have the technical means to provide a secure early access to these users, 
And then we did not have the bank within the team uh, to grow and nurture this kind of community back then. So um, in the end, we had to actually cancel the initiative, which kind of led to some frustration. Um, one year later, we are now in a better position to start to build this community, just one step at a time. Uh, but our key learnings were, first, um, to make sure that you always have the technical means to deliver what you actually uh, promise to your users. And then, even more important, never underestimate the efforts to build this kind of uh, community. So, um, once you have gone through beta testing, you have kind of all those, uh, you have checked all the boxes, and you release your APIs. Uh, there are many different mechanisms that you can put in place to make sure that you keep receiving regular feedback. So I'm just uh, mentioning four of the ones uh, that we use, or that we have used in the past. Uh, the first one would be surveys. I'm personally not a big fan of them, but if at some point you need like a high volume of replies in a short period of time, this might be a good option for you. Then of course, metrics. Uh, I think this is a topic that is uh, discussed very often. Uh, can help you get visibility on everything that happens in the API ecosystem. There are many different ways you can do so. Among other things, we use uh, Adobe Analytics for the platform, and then um, and then uh, also a key to um, track the API usage. Then there are also providers that offer uh, plugins for feedback that are very easy to integrate in your platform. Uh, so basically, users can just from any given page uh, send the feedback and attach the screenshot. I guess every experience is completely different. Uh, in our case, we tested this approach and we realized that it was not that helpful because developers will use more the other support channels. So we ended up decommissioning it. And this leads me to the next point, which is actually support. Because um, according to research, 75% of your users are actually willing to report any issues linked to the API quality or uh, the performance. That means it's critical to make sure that you always keep open communication channels so they can actually do that. And in fact, over the last year since we launched the program, we have learned a lot thanks to all the support questions that we keep receiving all the time. So again, just to uh, share some examples, one of our lessons learned was the importance of being completely transparent with everything that we offer and everything that we do. So you heard before how we're offering uh, a testing environment and a production environment, and one of the struggles we had was that people were asking all the time, well, what kind of data can I get in tests? How is that different to uh, production? So what we did was to create the data collections that lab would be in which we clearly explain, explain what is available for each one of the APIs. And this has also been mentioned this morning, but it is extremely important to guide your users through each one of the steps of the journey. So again, at the beginning, we had an authentication guide. Um, it was, yeah, well written, but it was hidden guides within documentation. And what we realized was that users were actually just going to the reference documentation right away, and they would totally miss that step. So we were getting all the time questions about this topic. So now what we are doing is trying to guide them through each one of the steps in the places where we know it's more likely that they will apply. And um, I have saved my favorite tactic uh, for the end. Uh, I know there's always a lot of discussions about uh, the return of investment of hackathons, whether they're useful, whether they're not. But this is something <coughs> that has been heavily present in our strategy from the very beginning. Um, so over the last year, our team has either organized or supported more than, more than 15 hackathons. And what I want to highlight is that actually hackathons provide a great context to receive meaningful feedback if you set up the right uh, mechanisms for that. So these are some of the things that we uh, usually do. First, direct observation. So if you think about it, hackathons are a great opportunity to see how people react when they are exposed to your APIs for the very first time. So it may sound obvious, but you know, you can just walk around the room, look how they react, what are the kind of problems that they experience in the first minutes while they interact with your API. Then, uh, support questions. You will get lots of those if you are crafting and talking to all the teams. So that means the opportunity you know, to write them down, and then after the event, you can discuss this with your team. Then you can get even more creative. 
And so there's something that we tried, um, and it was quite fun in KD in one of the hackathons, which was, which was to create a specific challenge, which we call the back hunter game. So back then we were testing a new set of APIs that we were about to release. Um, so we encouraged teams to report any issues that they would find to compete for a price. Uh, so teams were really engaged uh, thanks to this. In a single event, we were able to identify more than 25 potential areas for improvement with those APIs. Then something our developer advocates for this is after the teams have pitched their ideas, just to have some sort of informal conversations with them, you know, get their insights, and get more feedback about the product and so on. And sometimes we also complete this with uh, some surveys that we hand out at the end of the event. Something that is also important, uh, metrics. So I mentioned before uh, the importance of this topic. And thanks to um, APG, which we use as maybe management platform, we're always able to track um, everything that has happened in terms of API usage, uh, in terms of the performance in the event. So it's always interesting to also analyze this at the end. And something that I want to highlight is actually your relationship with all these hackers doesn't have to end the moment that the event finishes. So we sometimes organize follow-up calls with the teams. Uh, we offer to publish articles about the ideas that they have come up with, and we try to find other areas for collaboration with them. And many times, it's actually during these conversations when we see more interesting insights even coming up. So with this, we're uh, kind of reaching the end of the journey together today. Uh, but I really hope that for you is kind of the beginning of a new journey, because as it happens with other types of uh, design, API design always occurs in iterations. So if you think about it, when you release a new API, that is kind of the beginning of your API life cycle. And so as you go through all these phases again and again, uh, you have the opportunity to keep trying new tactics uh, to see what works and what doesn't work for you. Uh, in fact, we are still going through the same learning process, so we will be around today and tomorrow, so if you have any recommendations, anything that you would like to, to discuss, we will be more than happy to do so. But before we finish, I would just uh, like to encourage you, if you have to leave today's uh, presentation with one single takeaway, to me this is it, is just keep listening to your customers, keep looking for better ways to solve the real pain points, and keep always aiming for the best developer experience. Thank you so much.